indeed there are forces against your soul there are forces trying to destroy your home there are forces trying to destroy your life and these forces are not having real bodies these forces are intangible you cannot touch them you cannot feel them so you need a god who said that you should dwell in the secret place with him you need that god who said that you should come to the shadow of the almighty to come to his shadow and shadow is intangible so if the lord god will tell you come under my shadow and we know that shadow cannot be touched but it will speak to you very clear that in that shadow you would have protection it means also that god who have the capacity to protect you with something that is intangible will also fight for you against the forces that are intangible the god who have said very clear that he will be with you he will guide you and he will protect you the one that says he will lift you with his own mighty hand and you have never seen that hand before the god that is called the invisible one that god can also fight your invisible battles that god can also fight your invisible enemy it is time that you arise and tell him lord take over these forces against my soul these forces destroying my home these forces that are causing me to do things that are crazy these forces that are causing me to do things that i end up regretting these forces that causes me to do things that i cannot explain i know this is not me i know in my heart of heart i don't want to do these things i'm doing it means that there are forces controlling you that you do not know but the lord will control them he will deal with each and every one of them and he will bring the victory to you because the Lord knows how to deal with the enemies that wants to destroy the elect. He said that the vengeance is ease. And I want you to come to that point of letting go and saying, God, please fight these battles. You know where to go to. You know how to do it. Please do it and bring the victory. I am down. I'm disquieted. My heart is heavy. I'm crying night and day and I cannot entirely say the reason why I'm crying but I know I'm sad. I know I'm not happy. Lord, please step in and do all those things that is causing my soul to be disquieted. Lord, please step in and deal with all of these rulers of this age for me and the Lord will fight in this battle. Just hope in him. The word of God says in Psalms 43, it says hope in God for I shall yet praise him who is the health of of my countenance and my God. He says, who is the health of my countenance and my God? I want you to know that God is there to be of help to you. He said God was the health of his countenance. So those times when you know you are sad, but you cannot explain why you are sad, but you know deep within that something is wrong. Yes, those who goes about like a roaring lion, came home to devour the thief who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy, but does it spiritually. The Lord will arrest that thief and he will destroy that thief for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So go to God and say, Lord Jesus, you see my heart. You know everything that is bothering me today. Lord, arise for me and deliver me. I'm in that trouble that I cannot explain. But Lord, stand out for me and turn the situation around. And you will see the Lord do it supernaturally for you. You will see the Lord step in and out of his mercy, it will turn the situation around in Jesus' mighty name. Remember, the word of God says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. Take notice of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. God will deal with every of this evil and he will bring you that liberation that you need in the mighty name of Jesus. What do you do when you realize that the struggles you were having, all the issues that you have been battling with were beyond the natural understanding? What do you do when you understand that you have been fighting the wrong fight? What do you do when you understand that all the things that have caused you to languish, all the things that have been destroying you, the things you thought you had an explanation to that was killing you softly, that was destroying your life at the end of the day, had backings from the spiritual world what do you do at this time dear child of god david came to a point where he knew he was battling he was struggling he had issues that wanted to destroy him he will go to god and cry to god at a point he was able to explain it that some of it was done by his familiar friends 
in Psalms chapter 41 verse 9. Some of it were done by those he had trusted, but it came to a point also in that same chapter that he realized that he was hurt by some devices, by some things he called evil disease. He was plagued with something that wanted to destroy his life, but he began to realize that these things may look like it has a natural explanation, but it was beyond the natural. The word of God makes life says, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. That is, we are not contending only with physical opponents, dear child of God. Your opponents, those who want to destroy you, are beyond the physical. And you must understand this today. They are beyond the people that you can see. The world that we live in is more spiritual than it is physical. So you need to come to that point of guarding yourself, of putting yourself together and receiving that strength, the supernatural and spiritual strength that you need. Because the devil who comes to destroy, to kill, do not come in a physical form. It comes in a spiritual form. The word of God says it goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom it may devour. Seeking whom he wants to destroy. Seeking whom he wants to end their destiny. But do you know one thing, dear child of God? It doesn't come against you physically. It comes sometimes mind. It comes sometimes speaking to you to do some things that are crazy. And you cannot explain how everything began to go off for you. Dear child of God, your fight is beyond humans. Your fight are against forces. The word of God made clear, it says we are not fighting against humans, it says we are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. How do you think Jesus did it when he went out there to battle in the kingdom of death and he said he got the key to the kingdom of darkness, to the kingdom of death and he broke the chains of those who were in captivity and he led them out and they were free. Dear child of God, everything was done spiritually. Yes, he was right in the tomb. He was buried right there in the tomb. But spiritually, he went to war. He went to fight the real fight. And that was against the spiritual host of wickedness. You need to rise up and tell God to strengthen you. Sometimes, you may get to the place where you are sleeping and you are in the dream and God will begin to bring victories to you. You will see yourself in the real battle and it will give you that victory. You will see yourself combating those real enemy and they are beyond the natural. They are beyond those people that you know, dear child of God. He said, my enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? Yes, there are people who speak that way. Psalms 41 verse 5. There are people who physically confront you, but I want you to know that your real enemy are beyond those people that have been confronting you. Your real enemy are beyond those people who have had bad intentions against you. And you need to come to terms with this. And you need to come to terms with this truth. You need to realize today that God helped me through this one. You will come out strong and you will come out better. You will look for these enemies and you will find none of them in the mighty name of Jesus because the Lord had brought a victory to you and your household and you will discover all of those things that had been a problem for years will go and never to return again in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will turn everything around and give you victory. That trouble will be far from you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus was speaking and then he said to them, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Dear child of God, it is important that you take prayer seriously. It is important that you put prayer as one of the paramount part of your life. Dear child of God, it is important that you make prayer a part of your existence. You make prayer a part of your life. The truth is your spiritual life would always be measured by your prayer life. The moment you notice that your prayer life has begun to suffer, the moment you notice that your prayer life has begun to dwindle, dear child of God, the moment you notice, the moment you see that you are fainting in prayer 
I want you to know that something is already being affected in your growth and you need to do something quickly about it. Jesus was speaking to them in Luke 18 verse 1 and he said to them, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Dear child of God, you need to make up your mind that you will not faint. You need to make up your mind that whatever the situation is, you would always pray. Says men ought always to pray and not to faint. You ought to come to that point that you are increasing your strength every day in the place of prayer. The Word of God says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. In Proverbs 24 verse 10, it said thy strength is little. Dear child of God, you need to make up your mind that every day you will be growing in strength. That every day you will see yourself advancing in the things of God. God wants you to grow. And that is why he said you should pray. You should pray without ceasing. He was simply saying you should pray without end. I mean, you should give yourself to the ministry of prayer. You should give yourself to the ministry of communication, to the ministry of communicating with God. Prayer is building relationship with God. Prayer is building a life that will stand firm and stand strong. No wonder Jude one twenty says that building up yourself in your most holy faith. He said praying. He said praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Prayer is one way that you will build your life in God. Dear child of God, prayer is one way that you will be firm. Prayer is one way that you would be strengthened. Prayer is one way that you will find your balance. So do everything to make sure that you labor in the place of prayer. Do everything to make sure you are consistent in the place of prayer. Do everything to make sure you are not giving up in prayer. Dear child of God, make up your mind every day that you would fulfill the demands of prayer. If you won't faint in prayer, I want to assure you, dear child of God, you will see yourself scaling through whatever challenges that the devil throws at you. You will see yourself making headway. You will see yourself having successes in life. But what the devil does is he will do everything to keep you from praying because he knows that every time he sees you pray, you are building a wall around yourself. He knows that every time you pray, you would overpower him. He knows that every time you pray, he would not be able to succeed against you. So what the devil does is to see that he affects your prayer life. Dear child of God, make sure you are not allowing anything, anything whatsoever affect your life of prayer. Did you notice that it was when your prayer life got weaker that your defenses against the wiles of the enemy, against the wiles of the devil, began to break down. The moment you became faint in the place of prayer, you discover things began to happen around your life. You began to fall unnecessarily. That was why Jesus said to them in Matthew 26, verse 41, He says, pray. Pray so that you won't fall. He says, pray so that you won't fall into temptation. Child of God. Make sure that in all that you are doing, nothing is affecting your prayer life. Nothing whatsoever is affecting your prayer consciousness because that is how you build up your life. That is how you build up your stamina. That is how you build up your strength. It says building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying. It says praying in the Holy Ghost. Dear child of God, may the Lord restore your prayer consciousness. Today, I pray for you that the Lord will restore your prayer appetite. That everywhere you go, you will give yourself to prayer. That every moment in time, you would commune with God. Jesus will rise up before the day and go to a solitary place. He will go there before the breaking of the day so that he would commune in the place of prayer. So that it will speak to God. So that it would make advancement in the things of the Spirit first with God before anything else. And the scripture made us to know in Psalms chapter 5 verse 3, it says, My voice will come to you in the morning. O Lord, in the morning 
will I send my prayer to you and keep watch. He said he will send forth his prayer to God every morning. That was one of the first things that will come from him. That is his voice of prayer. Dear child of God, make this a habit. Make this a daily routine. Give God your prayer because this is how you command your day. This is how you set the day in place. This is how you structure everything that you are supposed to get. Make up your mind today that your prayer life will not suffer anymore. Just ask God for the strength. Ask God for the ability. Ask God for the special grace and God will give it unto you. So like the apostles will say, we will give ourselves to the ministry of prayer. We will give ourselves to the communion with God in the place of prayer and in the world. And this is how they stood out. I pray for you that you'll be able to say this as well. You'll give yourself to prayer. You will grow every day in the place of fellowship and in the place of communion with God. I pray for you that every day your prayer appetite would be increasing in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what is draining you. It doesn't matter what is taking the best out of you. You will tell yourself, I would maintain prayer. I will give myself continually. I will remain steadfast. I will remain unmovable. I would remain unshakable. And I want to assure you, God will strengthen you. God will see you through. And God will sustain you to the very end. I pray for you that God will give you the special ability that you need to stand strong and to stand tall in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be greatly blessed. And the Lord will give you all that you need to sustain in Jesus' mighty name. It is well with you, beloved. God bless you and shalom.